Foo Shark Select. It's me, Winstorff. How are you doing? I'm also called Craig. Uh, and joining me today is, like I just said in the intro, it's Ryan. And also, the other one's Jay. Hello. How are we doing, everybody? All right. Yeah. Have, you, have you recovered? Um, at all? Well, you've just told you. The intro just told you what happened. Mm-hmm. I defeated him. There's obviously some more going on before that, though. Oh, the ongoing... Well, yeah, he, he tried to possess me at least once. <laughs> yeah, it got a bit worrying. My other half came downstairs to see me in the, see me in the living room going, Oi! 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 With that music in the background, which I refused to sing, because it brings back flashbacks. But uh, yeah, and he was there. But uh, he had me down in hell, and he was he was showing me how to play Tetris, in the way I described in one of the earlier podcasts, uh, using a certain meat door on the body. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I turned the tables on it, one of those long L-shaped ones. I got it. It was like... And every now and again, he just starts... He forgets himself and just starts Cossack dancing. No, when you did that, I got the L-shaped one, flipped it round, and let me tell you, it's not Cossack dancing anymore! That's what happened when I was in hell. But I came back. Did you miss me? Rose from the ashes like a phoenix. Like a sexy phoenix. Mm. Did you miss me? Hmm? Did you miss me? Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Did you miss me, Stu? I didn't really know where she'd gone. I'm going to start calling you Sir Cuntsworth. <laughs> so anyway, today we're going from this miracle, my miracle resurrection, straight to my miracle erection. And after that, we'll be looking at, it's a very ambitious episode today, would you say? Because yeah. today's episode involves this big craze that's been going around the internet, grapefruit, and no, sorry, tearing things. Mm. Not tearing your eyes up. No, no, not tearing my eyes up with a grapefruit. With Ryan, a grapefruit, and the most impressive tonsil play you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. But, but no. Instead, we're going to be uh, looking at tearing all the. We got. We've seen mainstream consoles. Uh, all the sort of like the ones you remember. Yeah, the ones that aren't <laughs> the ones that aren't eighties microcomputers, and the ones that sort of were the big the big companies made. I suppose you could say. So it was like. Nintendo, Sega, Sony, Microsoft, the big four of our sort of lifetimes from the late 80s, early 90s, where we all got into uh, into gaming, right up until the, the modern day. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. A few, we have missed a few out on the list, which Ryan has mentioned before we started recording, things like the Atari Jaguar. We might pop in at the end, just see what we think of them. What do you reckon? Yeah, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. All right, should we do a jingle to... To get us into it? Yeah. Yeah, Stu, do you want a jingle? Yeah, of course I do. Oh, okay. I need to watch been a while. I need to warm back on the jingle case. Um, let's have a look. Uh, uh, He's back from hell, but have no fears, because we put these consoles into tears. Yeah? Yeah. Well, okay. Good, yeah. <laughs> you can see you were all shell shocked by that. I can see Ryan's loins physically quivering there. That could have maybe got a bit too much for him. All right, so, okay, without any further ado, let's have a look. So let's start with the uh, console manufacturer from the from the old days, as it is now, the yesteryears, of the dirty years of the console wars. The ones that we all grew up with, Sega, here in the UK. All right, so let's start with the, mic- the Master System then, sorry, which was... 1987 and the Master System 2 1990. I had the Master System 2 growing up with Alex Kidd built in. Did you guys have the same one? I think we had uh, both. Yeah. I think we had the one with the red on. You had the oh the, the original Master System. Yeah, with uh, Sonic built in. Well, did it have a built in? Did it? I thought the original Master System didn't have anything built in. No, some oh no, some had Sonic, some had Mario. Uh, some had no, Sonic, had... some had Alex Kidd. Well, that's a two, isn't it? Your Master System 2, yeah. The Master System one's this bad boy with, yeah. the, with the red on it. With Alex Kidd. I've only ever seen one of them. So the Master System, uh, I've just put, I've put, put a little bit about each one, so we'll just discuss its history. So it was released in the competition with the with the, with the NES, 
or the NES, or the Nintendo Entertainment System, or whatever you want to call it. Nintendo. So, so people get very upset when you pronounce Nintendo consoles wrong, you know. Yeah. I might start, I'm going to keep calling it the NES, because that's what we called it in the UK. It was released oh, in competition a, with it. Hmm? A Nintendo. One of those. <laughs> Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah. She's not my mom, Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my console, Nintendo. <laughs> That's a crossover to our, our crossover to our earlier Terminator 2 episode. Uh, you should definitely go and watch that as well. But anyway, um, the Master System had fewer well-received games than the NES and a smaller library because, obviously, Nintendo demanded exclusivity from anyone who made games on them. Mm. But saying that, I definitely got Bubble Bobble for the Master System, and that's definitely also on the NES. Yeah. So read into that as you will. Uh, it never actually beat, beat the NES in Japan and the USA, but Europe and Brazil love it. So that's the bit of history about it. Mm-hmm. Exclusive games were, well, best selling games, shall I say. Alex Kidd and Miracle World. Uh, Stu, do you want to sing some music from Alex Kidd and Miracle World? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's of course the famous rock, paper, scissors boss fights, yeah. which were bizarre. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, the 8-bit versions, were famously solid. Yeah, and also had very good music. Really did. Jungle Zone. Yeah, Scrap Brain. Of course. (laughs) Scrap Brain being famously featured in the background in early episodes until someone said it was annoying. That's fair enough. Um, My dad once completed Sonic 1 and 2 on the Master System with all the Chaos Emeralds. When I was in primary school, that was my bragging rights for years. Alright, nice one. The last time my dad played a video game, I tried to make him play Halo and he spent half an hour firing off rounds from the minigun on the back of a warthog because he was impressed with how the shell casings looked. <laughs> my dad once completed Alex Kidd in Miracle World. What? Yeah. My, dad's play- my, my, dad, my dad literally spat his dummy out and had enough of that game and refused to play it. Mm. Uh, other good games for it, Castle of Illusion, another game my dad refused to play after a while. Nah, no, was good, that one. I don't remember that, that on, the, um, on the Mega Drive, though. I don't think they were very different the games. Yeah. The Master, uh, maybe, yeah. The Master System one was solid. There was a clock tower boss, but I could never defeat. Uh, Lucky no. Dime Caper starring, <coughs> starring Chonel Chuck. Remember that one? No. Not really. It was like Quackshot, but 8 bit, basically. I remember Quackshot on the Mega Drive. I don't remember Quackshot. Oh, that was when you fire plunges at people. Mm. And Fantasy Star, which was actually a JRPG and not one that's very well very well remembered by a lot of people. But there you go. There's a new um, one coming out, isn't there? Fantasy Star. So I. So I um, hear. Xbox, I think. So, um. Let's talk about rating this console then. Um, do, you want, do, you, do you want me to go first? Yeah, what would you rate it out of five? Well, um, I think historical historical importance. It's not very well remembered. Sadly, the poor master system. Uh, mine lives up in a drawer in my bedroom because it doesn't work on modern televisions, mm. and I can't fit a, an old telly in my house. So, um, so that's something I've got to bear in mind. The pad was nice. It had a nice controller. For the it was time. very comfortable though. It was just square. Yeah, right. it's just, it was the same as the NES one, really. Mm. So I was to give it like maybe maybe, it's, maybe like an average controller for that. There, uh, the games there were some good ones on there. I'm gonna say I would probably give it about realistically a three out of five. The Master System. Mm. What about you, Ryan? I uh, see. I'd give it only give it a two. Oh, talk talk me through. Talk well, because it's like when you say there's a, a few games, there's literally only <laughs> only a few games of the Master System that even remotely. Rememberable from back then to now, but like, I can only name like two, which yeah. was Sonic and um, Alex Kidd. Fair enough. And the controller, yeah, was was pretty basic, and the pause button was all the way on the controller. Oh, that's true. You know what? I'll stick with three. Sure. I'll stick with three only because of its pure staying power in Brazil. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's got yeah. nothing to do with you, though. Has it? Well, no, it's not all to do with me. Though. I have to, you have to look at the bigger picture as well. So it gets a two from me. Two for Ryan. What about you, Stu? Yeah, same two for me. All right, to top me through your thoughts, same as Ryan or anything? Or if we're doing half, so I'd give it one and a half. Nah, l- 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 let's not go to half town. That'll get crazy. Be like Guy Fieri in there, going to Flavor Town, if you start doing things like that. Mm. It's, it'll get weird. But okay, fair, so what's your reasoning, Stu? Is it the same as Ryan's? Or? Yeah, I can only remember two games from it, and I wouldn't say that they replay. I mean, I'd replay Alex Kid, but I think the um, 16 bit Sonics were better than. Yeah, yeah. They were definitely better. They were much more accessible. Yeah. And fun to play when you were younger. Next up, sticking with Sega, we go to 1990 and the invention of the Mega Drive slash Genesis. And later on, the Mega Drive 2. Because it was so good, they made it twice. This one was designed by an R&D team, uh, which was run by a guy called Hideki Sato, 
and Masami Ishikawa. There you go. I did pretty well there. Did, I, I, I didn't trip over the Japanese names once. Ooh. And the Mega Drive was uh, adapted from Sega's 16-bit arcade board, which is why it had a lot of arcade games on it, I suppose. It was quite famous for it. What else can I say about that? Oh, my information, let's have a look. It's got a library of more than 900 games created by Sega and a wide array of third-party games too. Oh, and of course, the famously, the Mega Drive had some uh, additional add-ons. I mean, what are the kind of add-ons are you going to have for than, than additional ones? <laughs> um, it, had the, it had the Mega CD, which was too expensive when I was a kid and I never got one. And the 32X, which came out, I think, about the same time as the PlayStation, so it was pointless. Yeah, did it put up to, like, 32-bit or something? Yeah, that's what the right. Sega CD was. But you had to have a massive stack of stuff, in each, each with its own power cord mm. and stuff like that, so it just wasn't... It wasn't really viable. But there you go. So that's the Mega Drive. Um, notable games. Uh, you guys feel free to weigh in as well. I've got a little list here. Sonic, the, all the Sonic games apart from 3D, because that was crap. Spinball was all right. Yeah. But the main the main Sonic games, the numbered ones, the Sonic and Knuckles, were, wow, they were amazing. And Sonic and Knuckles, you could plug Sonic 3 into the top of it, and it made like a really long Sonic game with a save game feature, which not many Mega Drive games had. Uh, you had Streets of Rage 1 and 2. There was never a third one. There was never a third one. Um, there was Road Rash. Yeah, yep. and Jailbreak. Jail, Jailbreak was on the, not on the Mega Drive, was it? Oh, no, it wasn't on that. Mm. PlayStation. You mm. mop it. There was two really good Disney games on the Mega Drive, Aladdin and the Lion King. I don't know if you played those two. They were really good. Castle and World yeah. of Illusion as well. Yeah, or oh, World of Illusion. Roll up to the rescue. That creepy fucking yeah. caterpillar that, that gives you a sexy look as you walk, go walk past it on the first level. Mm. He was horrible. Yeah, or the Floss yeah, yeah, Spider as well. Oh, yeah, the Floss and Spider. Roll up to the rescue was good, yeah. That's a good one from Ryan there. That was the cutest game I've ever played in my life. It's like the overload of cute. It's like, oh my god. It's like a thousand quads in Morrowind. What's well, the noise you used to make? Okay. <laughs> when he dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, back onto back onto the uh, where we were meant to be going with that. So yeah, the Mega Drive had a lot of very good games. Desert Strike. And well, all of the strikes were pretty yeah, good. Yeah, they were all fucking amazing, mate. What else was there? Any other classics? Any other bangers we can think of, as they say in the industry? Uh, I think that. Uh, we'll put me on the spot. Columns. Hey, oh, columns, fucking yeah. columns. Columns. Oh, with that weird classical sounding music on the 16-bit. Yeah, could, when that Maybe came out, amazing. couldn't get mum and dad off the bloody... Thing. No, my, I think I caught my dad humping it once. Italian I know, but he like. Oh, now who remembers how Italian night you start? I'm sure you do, Craig. Yep, you load the game, it's like you get the Sega screen, it's all silent, you're all waiting, then it goes <laughs> on the fucking speakers at you. I think it's meant to be saying goal, but obviously voices did not sound good <laughs> back in those days on video games. I nearly shat every mm-hmm. time, especially when, when, when someone sneakily turned the volume up. Golden that's how obscure it was. Oh yeah, which of course had the famous music, which paused so the bodies could go. Go on, Stu, you got this one. It's like the real thing. Yeah. <laughs> which is like Streets of Rage, but with axes and things. Right, so uh, what what score would you give it? Um, I would say, historical importance, it, it was always a good nemesis for the uh, Super Nintendo. It forced Nintendo to make the Super Nintendo because it came out first and made the NES look like a grey box full of cum. Um, <laughs> that's 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 the that, that's the official statement from Nintendo. They said that. Don't come at me, internet. Um, so yeah, it was it was powerful back in its day. Um, it was it, again Europe and Brazil. It was a massive, like proper best selling console. The control pack was all right. Yeah, the library of games was fantastic for it, though. It's proper nostalgia. My nostalgia glands be frothing over mm. thinking about it. Uh, all the hours of fun I used to have on it. So I would say um, four out of five for me. Mm. Ryan? Stu. Oh, Stu. That's past the Stu. All right, so it's better than a master system, so I'd say three. Three? That's a harsh judgment, Stu, for such a Not really. classic console growing up. We got Go well because we got um, PlayStation's and Xboxes to rank yet, so you can't get ahead of yourself and start dishing out fours on a Mega Drive. Well, I'm just being honest. It's not. I'm. I'm not trying to pace it out. I'm mm. rating them what I genuinely think of them. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with the Stu. I reckon it is a good console and everything, but I'd still I would give it a three out of five. Well, yeah, it's fair be- enough. It's better than a Master System, but it's not as good as a PlayStation, is it? Well, it depends entirely on your personal opinion, I suppose, doesn't it? It's all, it's all subjective. That's the joys of tearing things. 
the next one, if you fast forward to 1995, like that, fast forward, that was my mouth noise for the day, um, was the famous, best-selling and really powerful Sega Saturn, though I can't keep a straight face, it was the poor Sega Saturn, which was uh, initially successful in Japan, but failed to sell in large numbers anywhere else. Because uh, it came out four months before it was supposed to, so there was no marketing in place for it, really. And uh, once the PS1 and the Nintendo 64 came out afterwards, it kind of mm. lost traction, fell down a black hole to hell for the Tetris Man. Uh, this is because it was famously really hard to program for, because it had a weird CPU layout. I think it had two CPUs or something like that. So it was an absolute twat bag to program for. Did you ever play on the Sega Saturn? Yeah, I yeah. think someone had it. Yeah, so um, when we didn't have one. No, one of our next door neighbors used to have one, and I went around and I played Need for Speed for the first time on it. Need for Speed. Oh, okay. So, you, so you've got a good memory of it, though. Yeah, that kind of blew me away. To be fair, I never played like a a car game that looked like that before. Um, yeah, other than Ridge Racer, but actually, like from what I remember, it was pretty decent. You just had to race down a motorway. Yeah, it's quite simple, but for its time, but for its time, quite mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, some of the games which I've got down for that were best sellers, Nights into Dreams, which I did not understand how to play, because I had to go on somebody else's as well. Mm. Uh, I didn't understand what Nights into Dreams was, I just flew around as a funny looking jester bloke, I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> um, Sega Rally Championship, that was that was pretty oh, cool, yeah, that was I remember. Good, yeah. from, I remember that from the arcades, though. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, Sega, Sega had a lot of arcade parts. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga, which I remember you rode a dragon. And it's like, um, like when the views from behind, it's like on rails almost. You know, like Star Fox, that kind of thing. That's a remake as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Sega uh, Sega's knocking it out of the park at, at the moment, but they weren't back in 1995. <laughs> uh, they had Grandia, which is a JRPG, which is popular with the JRPG set. And they had House of the Dead, which was the famously massively cheesy, terrible voice acting light gun game. Oh, yeah. Which was a. Uh, did, did that go like House of the Dead when you pressed enter? I think so. It's like the old impact there, like Resident mm. Evil. Like Resident Evil. And things like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I remember playing Alien Trilogy on it. And I'll be honest, I'll, I'll give the Saturn props, it had the better port of Alien Trilogy. Because, you remember know, the, bo- the bonus levels where you had the time limit to collect equipment and ammo yeah. and get to the end? On the PlayStation, it didn't have any. Hanoi, but on the Saturn it had the the one from Aliens where if you have five minutes to reach minimum safe distance, it had that. And it was like that is awesome. So but yeah, the Saturn. Do you know what its biggest failure was? It was meant to have a Sonic game and it never got one. How can you release a Sega console without a Sonic game? Imagine if Nintendo released a console and didn't put Mario on it. I know that's like not having a mascot in it, isn't it? Or Xbox didn't release a Halo for a whole console generation, isn't mm. it? It's it's no wonder the poor thing fell into the shitter, is it? The Saturn, more like the shat shat cum rag. Yeah, shat will do. All right, so uh, I'm going to give the poor Saturn a one out of ten. The poor, no, no, that's not fair. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. I've <laughs> raised the score just to lower it further. No, um, what I meant to say, I'm probably really with a one. It's probably a bit harsh. I say a two out of five because Alien Trilogy was pretty cool on it. But you can't. You can't raise a whole console just because it had one good game. Yeah, that came out. It came out on the uh, PlayStation as well. No, you know what? You're right. You've talked sense into me. One out of five. The poor Saturn, lowest score yet. Yeah, it sat in a little cummy bin. It didn't really do much historically. Uh, the joy pads. They had that massive round controller, which they, I, think, I think they released another one that was a bit better. But that massive round controller was like it was like having the bin lid and trying to press buttons on the bin lid. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it didn't. It's not left its mark on history, has it? Anyway, yeah, one out of five. Poor old Saturn. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Right. Same for me. Yeah, one out of five. Yeah, any particular? You want to go into any more detail on that? Well, Break it down there's, there's no, there's no really nothing that stands out from it, is it? It's just it, a meh console, was, and then it's just... it was there. It didn't do much. It left. Yeah. Okay, it Stu. It's imprint in the world. Yeah, Stu. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, so it was definitely fart too. <laughs> yeah, poor old fart to Saturn. It tried. And it got absolutely mullered by the PlayStation. And that was the end of that. Okay, so on to the final Sega console, 1999. It was the Sega Dreamcast, which was, uh, like I said, the last Sega console, sadly. Poor Sega. After putting up a good fight for years. Mm. This was though, their last effort, their swan song, if you will. Famous games for the Dreamcast were Shenmue 1 and 2. Oh, uh, Life Simulator. Wake well, of Fame. 
Um, it's a story about a man whose dad gets killed by a token uh, Hong Kong martial arts film baddie, and he asks people about sailors and drives a forklift. And the voice acting is um, it's like interesting. It's like, hey, I want to work on the forklift trucks. Okay, you could work on the forklift trucks. Like that, that's what they all sound like. It's like, imagine if Shot Select was Shenmue. <laughs> Welcome to Shot Select. With me today is Ryan. But then another voice goes, hello. <laughs> and fewer. She, she just went, hi. Like that, that's what it'd be like. <laughs> it'd be amazing. Thick boys. <laughs> How do you know anything about Thick Boys? Thick Boys, yes. you say? <laughs> yes, I have heard of these Thick Boys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one of the games that came out on the Dreamcast of good reception was Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Wait, yeah, just, going back to, just going back to oh, Shimu yeah. or whatever the fuck it was called. Um, Shimu, don't, yeah. Don't think I remember about that. Some sort of gumball machine, and you opened it, and you could get little Sonics in it. That's right, yeah. You could spend all your time just raiding a gumball machine. Wasn't there like uh, a proliferate, if you will, of quick time events in that game? Yeah, it's quick time tastic. I'm not very good at quick time events. I panic at the wrong buttons. Yeah, there's like loads of chase scenes, and they were all quick time events, and everything was quick time events. Yeah, there's also an arcade in the game where you can play loads of classic Mega Drive games. Like it was like in game emulation. It's pretty cool. Mm. I remember that. So yeah, there was that. Shit, new. There was the Sonic Adventures one and two, which for me I think was probably the last. What was, what was that? that? What was that? Just got a text. <laughs> Did, oh, that was very exciting. Mm-hmm. It was the last. Ra- what were you doing then, Stu? Was that the sound of loose, wet skin being manipulated? <laughs> 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 Contain yourself, you only got a text. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 was really the last ride for Sonic and Co. before it got bad. Apart from Sonic Mania. Um they yeah, fit infamously had a character called Big the Cat, who was a big purple idiot who went fishing and nobody liked him. Mm. I remember that about Oh, I see that big purple thick thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's, he's a thick boy and best not upset Ryan. But yeah, he was a bit he was a bit sorry Ryan, he was a bit crap. Um I remember playing that when when it first came out and my mind being blown by how cool it looked. By how fast and slick all the graphics were. You had that little thing that plugged into the controller, didn't you, that you could didn't you could you put yes. some creature in it or something? Yeah, it's a visual memory unit and you could use it to play mini games with certain save game files. If you had a save game file of certain games you could play mini games on it. And the Sonic one was that you could download these little stupid bird things called Chows into it, and it practically turned into a Tamagotchi. Mm-hmm. The only downside with those things is, speak for personal experience, because I've got one um, on my TV cabinet, is that the VMUs drain batteries like a motherfucker, so they are practically useless as uh, as its own thing. Just have to keep it plugged into the controller and use it as an actual memory card. But it's pretty cool. I like I like my Dreamcast. Um, Jet Set Radio, that was another famous yeah, one. Yeah, I remember Jet Set Radio. Or Jet Set Grind, as it was called in Japan. I think Crazy I remember played that on Xbox, though. Jet Set Radio. Yeah, they released a ton of their games for the original Xbox after they went under. Yeah. They, made a, they made a bit of a deal with Microsoft, didn't they? So they lived on. Crazy Taxi, remember that one? Mm. Yeah, from I the arcades, play- mainly that one. I remember playing it and and just liked just playing the offspring over and over again mm. in, the, in the background. So Dreamcast, um, did you two ever get to play a Dreamcast very much? Not very much. I've had a couple of games. Wow. So it'd be quite hard for you to, to grade this one, really, then, wouldn't it? I still give it a best shot though. Once I've got a Dreamcast, I've got a good few games for it. I'd say it's good fun. The controller's a bit weird. Um, you have to get used to having one stick when all modern ones have two sticks. Um, the VMU, nice idea, but the battery life doesn't really do it any good. It's got a pretty good library of games. I would give it a three out of five. Three, same really? tier as, same tier as a Mega Drive. That's a four for the Mega Drive. Yeah, but it's averaged out for everyone else was a three. Yeah, it's all right. Well, that's my personal score. I'm sticking to it. Three out of five. So you put right. it higher than a Mega Drive? No. Again, this is my, my personal score for Mega Drive is four. My personal score for the Dreamcast is three. I'm not trying to game the system. I'm just being honest and saying what my personal score for it is. So if your scores drag it down, fair enough. This is shout, yeah, I'd, I'd This is shout it, select reviews. So. I'd give it two. Again, it's not that memorable. That's fair enough. And there's a I'll give it one. couple of games on there. Be many. All right, fair enough. Stu, what's your thoughts on the one? That's a harsh judgment. Uh, not really. Um, for the generation it was released in, it was the poorest console. 
I haven't really got any desire to play any games off it. The ones that I did play that were on Xbox, I wasn't a massive fan of. So, so you're, sti- oh, well. you're sticking with your one then. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Okay then. In other cases, now we're going to jump out of the burning car crash that Sega's console career. Uh, and we're going to jump into a console that's still going, like a mighty swan. A mighty swan crewed by an Italian plumber. It's Nintendo, everybody. It's the bit that all the all the uh, US fans have been waiting for. I suspect they're going to hate us by the end of it. Uh, so let's go. First of all, we've got 1986, all the way back in time. <laughs> I was but a little two-year-old. and uh, That's not like a forward in time. What noise. was it? Hang on, then. Let's see. Yeah. I think it'd go backwards, it? Go backwards. Like that. Yeah, that's better. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, that's very important. I'm glad we did that. So, yeah, the NES, or Famicom, as it's called in Japan, family computer, was, um, like we said earlier on in the podcast, it came along at a time when the North American gaming market was really struggling, and it had a, pretty, it had a very good, consistently good range of games. But it was... They were big cartridges, weren't they? Like books. Yeah, like big grey books. Apart from Zelda, which was a gold book. But it was a lot more expensive than microcomputers, which is why I think it didn't catch on as well at first in the UK. And then the Master System, for whatever reason, did better than it. But uh, yeah, so compared to microcomputers, it was very expensive to buy games for. But Americans loved it, the Japanese loved it, and it's still going today. So uh, some famous games for it, of course, Super Mario Brothers 1 to 3. Uh, 3 being probably the best one. The most in-depth one with the most special moves and stuff. Uh, Kirby, who was a big pink balloon bloke that inhaled things yeah. and gained their powers. He was a strange fella. Yeah. Sucked things up, didn't he? Pretty much. Like Stu. Like Stu mouth like a fucking hoover, mate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's what, exactly what he's like. Um, sorry about that. Uh, Legend of Zelda was a man in the green hat that went around killing monsters, saving the world. He's a- the- actually called Link, not Zelda. That's correct, he's Link, and Zelda's the princess. Yeah. And Nigel is the third character that you don't see very often. He's a director, he's appeared really? in the scenes a lot. Nigel Webber. Nigel Webber! Uh, <laughs> I'm the director of Zelda. <laughs> and, then, and then he I just. Touch my eyes with my tongue. I can touch Ganondorf <laughs> with my tongue. Uh, so, anyway. So, yeah, Legend of Zelda was, of course, massive. He's still doing pretty well today, only bless him. Uh, Breath of the Wild is quite fun. You get to paraglide around and hit lizards in the face. So, good for me. Uh, Mega Man 2 was another famous game that got released. He's a little blue bloke that fired an arm cannon at people, and it was freaking solid. That game is virtually... He had some pretty funny box art, though, didn't he? Oh, yes. Uh, if you want fancy a laugh, people, and you've never actually uh, looked this up before, look for the US Mega Man box art, I think it was, which looks like a man who's been re- rebuilt out of corpse body parts and brought back to life and dressed in Mega Man clothes. <laughs> it's probably the best way to describe it. It's horrible. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. And, of course, Metroid, which is about... Um, a space marine looking person who goes around killing lots of aliens with a cannon in a very uh, like technical platforming, platformer game only it turns out the big twist at least back then it was a woman all along what? that was a big twist oh, fair, yeah. can you imagine that yeah. can you imagine that being a big twist back then? probably much like oh my god it was a woman like, but yeah that was Samus of Metroid fame <laughs> um, so the NES I say I've got of course, it's famous to be released as a, as a classic since the little NES Mini, which I've got. Uh, again, it sold out and created this massive like eBay scalper scene where they were selling for hundreds of pounds because people are mad. Um, what's your thoughts on the NES, people? I'm going to say they had some good games. I like, say, the Mar- Mario's 1 to 3 are good. I like Zelda and Metroid mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, say the games are the games are quite old by today's standards, much like the Master System. But I didn't play it as much back then. I've got more enjoyment out of it nowadays. I'd say two out of five. What do you guys say? Yeah, yeah I'm happy with it too. Yeah. Do you guys want to describe your thoughts on it? I'm happy with it too. It's pretty much summed up there, Craig. Yeah. You guys just both agree with me on that one, yeah? Yeah, I did, I did have one. And I had uh, Mario for it, and that was it. Oh, you actually had one? Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, there was a, still got it somewhere. There was a Ninja Turtles game for it, which was really good as well. I remember playing that. It was like Streets of Rage, but it was Ninja Turtles. Mm. Or as we call them over here, the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, because the BBC was terrified of ninjas. Teenage Mutant Teenage Turtles is what we call them over Teenage, here. Yeah, Teenage Mutant Teenage Turtles. And, and Stu, what was their powers? 
I think you said it was um, being awkward and masturbation. Yeah, being angsty and masturbation. That's right. Ah, that's a classic throwback to an earlier episode. Uh, when I that's a shameful display for me. Look how jaded we've become now. I can just say it. And it's like, yeah, that's what I said. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I said whoopsie. But uh, nowadays, yeah, I don't care anymore. So next up, nineteen eight was well, not nineteen eighty six. We jump back in time. Nineteen ninety two. Um, good year, maybe. I don't know. I was still in prime. I was still the infant source. Some shit. How old was I in nineteen ninety two? Ryan Hill. Uh, eight. Yeah, something like that. That might, might be the year I got into gaming. To be fair. so, yeah. I got a master system for my eighth birthday. Um, but yeah, the SNES came along, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or SNES, if you want. But we're going to call it the SNES, or maybe Patrick. So yeah, old Patrick came along in nineteen ninety two. Um, this was Nintendo's answer, of course, to the Mega Drive. And it, on the hardware front, it kicked the living shit out of the Mega Drive. Um, it had better chipsets, it had better mute. Uh, well, it's, the narrative is, and it is a, probably a fact to be fair, it had a better sound chip. Because uh, a lot of Nintendo, diehard Nintendo fans, say that the music sounds better than it does on the Mega Drive. But my argument is that they never listen to the music for Streets of Rage. Yeah, that's true. It, yeah. I don't think the technology matters that much as long as you get a good composer no. doing the music. But yeah, yeah. Good musical same with Sonic games. Yeah. yeah, Sonic, Streets of Rage, Rocket Knight Adventures. There were so many good games back then with awesome Golden soundtracks. Axe. Yeah, that first level music off Golden Axe. Oof, that's a hoot. But yeah, exactly. But there you go. It's far superior hardware wise. The control pad had the famous um, four buttons as well. First one with bumper buttons. And yet, four buttons on the, uh, well, what is now the modern stand, four main buttons on the front of it with the D-pad. Um, now, famously, it looked very different in America to it, how it did everywhere else in the world. Have you ever seen the American one? No. I don't mean to be mean. To, I'll just Google it now, right? I want to get your real-life reactions to this. I mean, I don't, again, I don't wish to offend our American Nintendo fan friends on the podcast, but it, it looks like a bag of dicks. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. The weird fucking one with the weird levers on the front. It's like lavender and white. And yeah. And it's like a weird obelisk. And yeah, but it goes like a weird cum colour, doesn't it, after like a day in the sun? And also, the control pad had lavender-coloured face buttons, whereas everywhere else in the world it had blue, green, yellow, and red, which I think looks far cooler, don't you? Yeah. Uh, but, did, I mean, did you guys know anyone that had a SNES growing up? I remember going around someone's house in high school and they had a a SNES when we played Mario Kart and I think that's the only time I've ever been on a SNES. That's fair enough. But yeah, so, so some famous games for the SNES were, of course, Super Mario World and Mario Kart, as Stu has just said he's played on. Uh, of course, it had the famous uh, Mode 7, I think it was called, which has had that sort of fake 3D thing going on. Oh. You know, like in Mario Kart where it looks yeah. 3D but it's like a flat picture which you're just travelling around in. Best way to oh yeah, like around. Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd say that it's the first console to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> so, Super Mario World, Super Mario Kart. Uh, another famous game is Chrono Trigger, very famous JRPG. I don't think it's ever released in. It might, I might be wrong, but I don't think it's ever released in Europe. I only got to play it on an emulator years later, and I've got it on my, uh, my mini SNES now as well. Um, Final Fantasy VI, which some people, some Final Fantasy fans would say is the best Final Fantasy. I would argue that, but that's for another day. Uh, but yeah, very good game. Star Fox, where you're a flying fox and there's a frog that's always pissing you off. Mm. And you have to shoot down spaceships. The frog is going, help me! And you get, and, you, and someone says, someone says, do a barrel roll. <laughs> I'm well up on my memes. I know all that one. Let's rate the snares. So, do you want me to go first again for the snares? Mm-hmm. So again, it was a very impressive piece of hardware. Uh, the... The, joy, the controller sort of laid the path for controllers to come. Very revolutionary. Had some very good games. I just never got to play it much growing up. But I do enjoy it nowadays. But, in my mind, it's not as good as the Mega Drive. I always value that more. So I would say, 3 out of 5. Your thoughts, Ryan? I never really played one, to be honest. So. I mean, knowing what you know from this historical importance of yeah. it, and the kind of games that yeah. it, would you have enjoyed it? I'd give it a 3. Yeah. yeah. Okay, just you. Yeah, it's better than a NES. I wouldn't say it's any better than a Mega Drive, so... Yeah. A three. Okay. Oh, right, yeah. Three's across three, the board. Yeah. You see, everyone, that was yeah. respectful. We didn't have a go at it. I'll call it a loser bum hole, because it's not as good as a Mega Drive, because the console wars are over. But it's still... It's, all all the, the it's on the same tier as it now, though. Oh, it's just good. Yeah, exactly, because it's a new console war now. These guys are like old old veterans that made friends years ago. Mm. 
Okay, so next up then, fast forward to 1997, when I was in year eight in high school. I don't know what happened in 1997. Oh, P- Princess Diana died. Well, that's just sad. Probably shouldn't talk about that on the podcast <laughs> about video games. <laughs> Anyone remember anything funny that happened? 1997. Not really. No, well, I'll tell you what did happen. The, the Nintendo 64 came out, that's what. And it was nicknamed, or codenamed, Project Reality, which is a bit... And the games look nothing like that. It's only reality it's much, it? if we're all made of giant polygons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it was it was mostly complete by 1995, but it was delayed until 1996. And only came out in the Europe, in, in the Europe, in the Europe, in 1997. Uh, when Time named it Machine of the Year. Mm, clearly hadn't met Ryan back Machine then. Machine of the Year. <laughs> 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 And it launched with three games, which is Super Mario 64, Pilot Wing 64, and one exclusive to Japan called Saikyo Habu Shogi. Um, I don't know what it's about. I've not really looked. But there you go. And it came out to uh, compete with the PS1 and the Sega Saturn. So what I'd say was it helped to teabag the Saturn into oblivion and then just kind of duped it out with PlayStation for a bit. I think, in my eyes, it never beat PlayStation. But no. Again, American. I had the better graphics being 64 <coughs> bit, but the, the quality still didn't look very good. Yeah, didn't it? Sony had absolutely shed loads of games in comparison as well. Mm. And also, what was going on with that control pad? Yeah, oh, you like need three arms to hold it. Who is it made for? Who is it made for? Aliens? Yeah. People with three arms? Why did it have the, like, the, the analog stick in the middle? I don't know. Yeah, Why? there was a button at the back as well, so mm. if you held it by the D pad, you couldn't use the button, button at the back. It's madness. It's like it was mostly kids that played it. It's a very strange design. Considering that Nintendo were only on the ball with this kind of thing, it was a very strange design. Mm. But uh, there we go. So um, I remember a couple of good games for it, though. Go on, which ones do you remember? Pilot Wings. Yeah, that was fun. Get to glide around and try yeah. and land yeah, on yeah. the Gold, Golden Eye. Oh, yeah. And well, the, uh, the, the Star Wars one. The, yeah, the, the best Star Wars was game. Was that the fighter game? Uh, was it uh, like a Shadows of Shadow, the Empire? Yeah, Shadow of the Empire. Was that the was it first person? Third. No, no third person. It it played out along the same time line as Empire. Because you had to do the Battle of Hoth and then they had to go and destroy the Death Star and stuff. Okay, so I never really played an N64 that much. I had a little go on Mario 64 when I was in the hospital when I was in school. And I played a little bit of Goldeneye multiplayer once or twice. Hmm. I always thought it was weird when he aimed your gun, he didn't move his arm, he just kind of like wiggled the end of the gun around but kept his wrist perfectly still. Yeah. So you yeah. like so to shoot out the corner, he just move his hand but not his arm. So it's like you weren't even looking. Mm-hmm. Like James Bond just walked around just going flicking his wrists around to shooting people without looking. But yeah, um Hang on. Mm-hmm. Just looking at that control, how did it move about with one analog stick and a D pad on that side and the buttons on the other side? Well, much like on the Dreamcast with difficulty. It was very confusing. When, if you go back to it now, you, it's very difficult to get your head around. Mm. It's like headache-inducing madness. I don't like it, but there you go. So, yeah, other famous games was, of course, like, say, Super Mario 64, which was massive for its time. Like, proper, a lot of content in there. Mm. And you could throw a penguin off a cliff. Mm, nice. If you were that kind of guy. Um, there was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, or as I've written, Ocarina of Time, because apparently I can't I can't type, mm. which is a Zelda game where you played a magical musical instrument. That one was very uh, very well liked. Nigel Leather was in that as well. He, he was the one that, that played the uh, Ocarina. Oh, yeah. He's like, hi, I'm Nigel Leather. This is a weird in-joke that no one's going to understand. Mm. Shot select, bringing you weird in-jokes which nobody understands. You could you could do some nice stuff in, in like post production with that stream. Maybe put a bit of an echo on it. That'd be cool. Um, Golden Eye, as we said. Banjo Kazooie. Stu, what's your thoughts on Banjo Kazooie? Never played it. No. What, what about how he looks? Oh, he's got big dick fingers. Yeah. Um, and he apparently is a bear, but I'm still not convinced. But yeah, he's definitely got massive dick fingers. Yeah, you have been ripping this guy on Twitter all week. Like he showed up on he, he he showed up in Smash on the Switch, and you've been on his back like Kazooie ever since. Yeah, like about his weird well, fingers. Kazooie looks very worried when uh, Banjo's got his when his Banjo's hold on to anything. If you look at Kazooie's face, he looks very worried. Is he, is he thinking the same as you? Are they fingers? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are those? <laughs> right. Why are they weeping? Wow. Okay. So moving on from uh, Banjo's weeping fingers. 
episode name anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Kart 64 was the other best-selling game on the N64. Um, it was all right. I played it once. The draw distance is quite bad, so I had a bit of trouble with it. But back in the day, it was really good graphics, I suppose. They also did a Doom on the 64, which is apparently one of the best Doom versions out there. So the N64 is good for what anything, and it's for hardcore Doom fans. Why is it the best one? Apparently it's really good levels and stuff. Oh, right. If you haven't played Doom on the, on the SNES, by the way, quick aside, it is the worst port of any game I've ever played. Yeah. Oh god, it's absolute garbage. I, I put it on the SNES Classic, and it's upsetting to my eyes. It, it made me cry. I had to go and play Doom 2016 to freshen up my palate a bit after mm-hmm. that, that, that monstrosity. Do your um, Doom shotgun and uh, Poe Demon. Uh, you want to do a shotgun, Doom guy shotgun in a, a, a pinky? Yeah. As in the, uh, in the retro style, eh? Just let me visualise yeah. it. So you've got the shotgun, he goes... <laughs> and then the pinky goes... <laughs> <laughs> so to get that together, it's... <laughs> no, you have to do the, uh, the um, pinky's attack noise as well. Oh, yeah, so he goes... <laughs> and then you go... How was that? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Uh, that's one of my favourite things to do. So, N64, um, will we take the super shotgun to it, or does it have power of a pinky? Um, for me, I would say the control pad was a step, five steps backwards. Um, I never really got on with many of the games that much. I know it was loved in the States and Japan, but it's got to be a one out of five for me. I never really enjoyed it that much. Yeah. I agree. The control, the control is just meh. Just threw a load of buttons on it. Added a weird thing in the middle, and then a button right at the back, like called the Z button or something, which was well yeah. weird. Yeah. Put it like this: I never had the urge to buy one or get someone to buy me one mm. because I had a PS One. Yeah. That's the way my mind works on this. And I'm sorry again. I'm sorry on 64 fans. I suspect there are plenty of good games on it, but I've just never played them. So I'm going to say one out of five for me. You guys? Are we dumping it straight in the trash? I'm dumping it in the trash, but not with malice and not like <laughs> throwing it in I'm like sorry mate it's nothing personal but it's like when we played D&D that time and Ryan threw the his 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 rat ally into a spike pit it's kind of like that so some sad music and it's like just a tear going down my eye as I do it but, <laughs> but yeah it's, it, 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 it's, it's going, going in it'd go the way as an old yellow yeah I'd take it around the back old yellow right in the back of the head with the super shotgun I'd do how would that go um <laughs> then the S64 goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to do a different noise. No, yeah. I just went for the protein again. For the pinky. Uh, how, would, how would it sound if you were doing it to Mario? If you're super yeah. shotgun in Mario? It's a me, I'm like, where are we going? Uh, I'm going to show you where Princess Peach is, what castle she's in. Oh, that's a very nice. Tell me more about the castles. <laughs> then it goes, do 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 and he dies. <laughs> again, I feel quite sad about it. But the thing is, if you had a mushroom that morning, you'd just go... And then you turn into like, like a little dwarf. It's like a two-foot two foot tall Mario and batter me. So uh, I'd have to make sure I hadn't had a mushroom that morning. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, N64 yeah, got, you got, yeah, we've got two barrels in that super shotgun, so one oh, for each time. You just have to be ready. Yeah, that's right. So just have to get in quick. Just adjust my aim downwards. Yeah. <laughs> Extra life gone, <laughs> motherfucker. Yeah, it's not a... But then, but, but then what if like Luigi showed up and battered me? Oh, you did have to make sure you had a side arm or so, wouldn't you? I think I think Luigi would be happy Mario's dead, personally. He's like, yes, I finally get my own games! And I think he'd be like, off he'd go. He'd go back to his mansion, wouldn't yeah. he? Yeah, with ghosts. Yeah, if he goes to his mansion, yeah. Super Luigi cat. Yeah, Sucking off his ghost in his mansion. Fucking hell, up off he goes again. Yeah. Control yourself! Good lord! He's got a vacuum on his back and he sucks up ghosts. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, right. Oh, okay. Oh, just jump in the gun here, Stu. Sucks Sorry, them man. up, not sucks them off. Yeah, my bad. <clears throat> anyway, Ryan, what's your thoughts on the, on the N64? I've already told you. Like, One. I forgot. Uh, your, uh, Cause, cause yeah, yeah, that's right. Now. That's right. Many you, you slammed that controller, that's right. Yeah. You, uh, you threw down on that controller. Yeah, I did. Okay. I haven't got three hands, so I can't use the controller. Would you throw it in the bin with malice, or just say sorry, mate, and take it out like old yellow? I'd never unbox it, to be honest. You just throw it away in the box? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's like... That's... <laughs> got you in, I got you in 64. <laughs> that is so blasé. Fair enough. Yeah. Stu, what's your thoughts? Yeah, so we can stay in far too. Okay, fair enough. So it's ones all around for the poor N64. Next up then, 2002. Um, it's the year when I was in college. 
probably, was, probably the year that me and Stu started mucking about, being layabouts, smelly students, combat rolling around college and getting funny looks for it. It was also the year <laughs> that uh, Nintendo went purple and released the Dream the Dreamcast. That's the fucking Sega on your bell end. The GameCube. That's Ooh. the one. Um, it was re- well received. People liked its controller, which, to be fair, despite its weird looks, isn't a bad controller. Uh, it had good a good software library, apparently. and uh, But it's criticised because it looked like a big purple brick. And it's a, Were you yawning, then? No. Am I boring you? I didn't yawn. Okay, carry on. You better not be fucking yawning, you cunt. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But say, it didn't have a DVD player, which in 2001 is pretty much suicide, surely. Yeah, because it had... It, I thought mini discs, didn't it? It went off CD. It did. Yeah, they had like, little shuriken discs that you could throw at people that you didn't like. Yeah, um, tiny discs. And that's right. But yeah, the controller was pretty decent, and it had four ports, just like the N64 before it, So and the Dreamcast. So four players could all sit and play together, mm. which was kind of fun. It also had a carry handle. In case you want to go for a walk with it or something, I suppose. But there you go. Yeah. Take it around your friend's house. All right, mate, you're outside my dream on the GameCube. And that's what it was like. And everyone said no. Yeah, so no, you're right, mate. I've got a PlayStation. I've got a PS2. But anyway, yeah. So some famous games released for the GameCube was uh, Resident Evil 4, which was, to this day, a very famous Resident Evil game. I'm not too sure about it myself. I prefer the clunky old ones. The remakes thereof. Um, it had Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, which was not about farting, much to my disappointment. It's about Zelda goes on a little boat and just like bobs around doing quests on the big old ocean. Uh, uh, Super Mario Sunshine, which was a... It's, that was another Mario game that existed. I'll be honest, I've not played it. Yeah, didn't he have like a... He had like a big cum cannon on his back, Oh, here he? he goes again! Bloody I'm hell! Out. Oh my <laughs> god! Is that an excuse just to throw some bloody... <laughs> Masturbatory joke at <laughs> He's out of control, this guy. <laughs> some sort of penis joke, whenever he can. Yeah, you, you, you need to have a lie down after this, Jim. That's what you need to do. Right, okay, yeah, but he, he, he probably did have a big yogurt cannon on the series now. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, that was me- yeah, it's like... Hmm? Yeah. Blue yogurt, yeah. Yeah, blue yogurt, yeah. Fucking weirdo. <laughs> um, Metroid Prime, which was the first person shooter Metroid game, which as I recall, was, I've seen it played, it looked pretty cool. Uh, right, why are you blowing on your phone? Hairs on it. All oh, right. Just That's... carry on, it's all right. I'm not doing anything in the way. <laughs> You're all just distracting me with your weirdness. I like it. I like it. I, I enjoy it. And of course, there's Metal Gear Solid Twin, Sa- Twin Snakes, which could be the first remastering of a game. Um, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, they added extra cutscenes and extra animeness to it, apparently. Yeah, like, yeah. Got... So I remember watching the trailer for it. Snake manages to jump in the air and land on land, standing on a Stinger missile. What? Like, he, he stands on a missile as it's fired. Does he surf a missile? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he jumps. It's during the Hind D fight, right? <laughs> You shoot the high D as you would do, then the cutscene play, cut plays out, and a missile gets fired at Snake, he jumps in the air, stands on the missile, and shoots his stinger back at the high D. <laughs> Brother! Blows it up. How the and fuck then, did you do that? Yeah, and then jumps off the missile, lands on the floor. Does he land with that classic pose with one arm out and one arm on the ground? I'm not sure. I I'm like, just, I just, that bit always stuck with me, and I was like, what? Yeah, so Hideo Kojima got to Hideo Kojima Metal Gear Solid mm. after the fact. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean... Oh, you didn't say high and D right, by the way. You didn't say high and D. Right. Like that. There we go. What's a Soviet high and D doing here? Um, yeah. So the GameCube, I'll be honest, I've got very little experience with it. I've never really even played one. Um, I know the pads are good, because I've used one on on the uh, Switch before, but I've never played a GameCube, guys, so I'm going to have to give it another one out of five. <laughs> think for the generation it's the weakest one again wasn't it so it's gonna have to be like a one mm. yeah yeah i say it's just not nothing i mean it's good they had a bigger library of games and the control pad was better i suppose so i might wreck on my scores with two just because it was but it's, it's definitely better than the n64 so I'll, I'll give it a two but you guys are going for yeah, one what, mm. what if we got sat at two though uh, the master system the nes and the uh dreamcast that works out for me I'm happy with that. Dreamcast. No, is it the same. same as a Dreamcast? I'd say a Dreamcast is better, but that's just where it ends. But this, we have to count all three of our opinions, don't we? So this is how it works. We have to, it's about all three of us triangulated. We we into one terrible homunculus. So as so you put the the rate the Dreamcast, the, there's the Dreamcast. The GameCube the same as the Saturn and the N64. 
The GameCube. Mm. It's the Sat Island and the N64. Yeah. It's a one then. Fair enough then. All right. You're right. When you look at it, yeah, go work. Like that, yeah, I, I, I never, yeah, I never had any desire to own one, so yeah, yeah. It must be a one. Fair enough then. Well, See, on an interesting side note, though, apparently if you try and eBay to buy the Twin Snakes, <laughs> a ridiculous amount of money. It's like it's still going for like eighty odd quid. It's fucking nuts, isn't it? Re- the retro industry is broken. It's a shame. So next up, fast forward to two thousand and seven, which was uh, a year that happened. I think we were all playing Xbox 360s by then, weren't we? Mm. It was a release of probably Nintendo's most famous console of all time. Everyone's got one, even your nan. It's the it's the Wii. Mm. It's named after in in the UK. It's named after urination, yep. uh, which is amusing. Uh, and it's the first console to use motion controls. Yeah. To get anything done, and it came with a sports game packed in with it, which I'm pretty sure is one of the best selling games in the world to this day. So uh, let's have a look what I can tell you about this. Uh, early models were compatible with the GameCube. In fact, they were a, they were a GameCube. Uh, because if you, I mean, there's one on my shelf. It's got a put the ports to put GameCube memory cards and controllers into. Yeah, I see. so that's pretty cool. Later models didn't though, which makes them kind of rubbish. There was also a Wii Mini and all kinds of things like that. I could never get on board of it because I was never sold by. The graphics. I was a bit of a graphics snob then because we had yeah, it was oh, three sixties yeah, and this, PlayStation well, just, threes. Well, it, just like GameCube graphics. Yeah, it was the HD era, wasn't it? So anything that's not HD is, was going to suffer. My dad got it, got his working with a composite cable, and it looked a lot better, but it still wasn't true HD. Um, it's one of those consoles where if you're at a party and I've, I've had a few drinks, it's great fun. I'll give it that. Um, but if you play, yeah, it's not I a good game. Hmm? I was going to say, I think that's when I first played it was around yours. Probably, We played yeah. Rabbids. Yeah, man, that Rabbids game was ridiculous. Mm. That was good fun. Um, but, say, it's not a kind of thing you'd sit and play many of the games of by yourself. There weren't that many good single-player experiences on it. In fact, let me list some I of think, the games. They were. I think uh, Mario Galaxy is supposed to be really good. That's one of Sarah's favourite games. Yeah, Mario so. Galaxy is, well, is on my list, yeah. I think it was Mario Galaxy 2 on the Wii as well. Or was that the Wii U? Yeah, I think one and two both on the way. Yeah, so they were good. Yeah, the Mario Kart was pretty good for the way. Uh, it had Super Smash Brothers Brawl, which everyone loved. You could play a Solid Snake in it. Mm. You could be a Solid Snake and batter a Pikachu, which was kind of amusing. Uh, they had Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which not as many people, not as many Nintendo fans like, as I recall. It gets a bit of a bad press because you have to wiggle your Wiimote around a lot. And mm. it takes away from the immersion, maybe. And it had, of course, Wii Sports. You could play bowling, golf tennis and some other oh fucking baseball yeah. bag of shit that is but yeah overall it was very well received people loved it and it sold yeah, but you could play the games without actually standing up you could just lie down and go oh yeah you could just lie and just you just lie just and flick I've... your wrist around and away you go getting a strike on bowling and it had just dance too which had rasputin on it which was an absolute class dance routine mm. which i still do at weddings to this day like a fucking party trick uh yeah. but there you go i mean it saved Nintendo, many people say. Because the N64 and the GameCube both got one out of five in Chart Select Tier episodes, and they were struggling because of that. Don't ask me how that works. And the Wii kind of saved them. I'd probably give the Wii myself a two out of five, mm. in that I didn't get into that many of the games on it, but I do appreciate that it was pr- a pretty clever piece of kit. It's a, it was a, it's a party console. Yeah, pretty much. Quite That's fair it. to say, isn't it? I mean, what? Oh, yeah, it's, it, was, it was perfectly what they set out to do was make a family console, wasn't it? Yeah, they they didn't intend to uh, make a make something to even challenge the 360 at that point. They were just trying something no, different to stay alive. Different, yeah. 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 So, I mean, what, what would you guys rate it? Yeah, same two. Yeah, two. Yeah, so it's not the kind of console that we would play ourselves that much, but we appreciate it. I think I. More f- this more time that I played it, I think I had more fun playing a Wii than I did a GameCube, so that's why a two is more justified. Yeah, and the good thing is, if you, it, it was, if, if you want to play GameCube games and you've got a Wii lying around because everybody has, uh, you can play GameCube games on it, mm. unless it's a later one. So fuck that. So uh, next up, we fast forward to 2012. I suspect this one's going to get a fair tea banger. Uh, it's the Wii U. <laughs> um, that was a fail in Nintendo's anyway. It was the first one to support HD graphics. And the control pad was, of course, the main draw. It was like a big tablet thing. 
mm. with the joy, joypad built around it. Um, and you could play your games directly onto it in some cases, not all cases. Um, say it was the first HD one, so that was a good thing for them. And it was also backwards compatible with all Wii software and accessories. So that's pretty cool. But the market, the marketing for it was an absolute disaster, mm-hmm. as I recall, because people even weren't even sure what it was. People thought it was um, it was like a, an, ad, an add-on for the Wii. Yeah. They didn't realise it was a new console, so it didn't go very well that way. But yeah, I mean, the control power was pretty clever, I suppose, for its time. But no, I'm still give it a one. Yeah, well, let's talk about the games first. Maybe, maybe I can change your mind on it. We have Mario Maker. That was quite clever. You can make your own Mario levels and uh, challenge people online to play them in all different styles from like 8-bit to modern. Mm. And of course, everyone just made big dick levels and things like that and got banned. Uh, but that was quite fun. They had Super Mario 3D World, which was, well, like any modern Mario game, really. They had Splatoon, which was like Nintendo's first attempt at an online shooter, which was... Uh, it's still like squids and ink. It's probably cool. But mm. again, I've never played it. I couldn't really say much about it. They had an exclusive with Bayonetta 2. They got them some love. Yeah. Did you play the first one? Or any I other? did not. I've not played them myself, but they're meant to be very good. And they had Xenoblade Chronicles X, which is a JRPG where you could be a mech and punch a giant monster in the face, probably. So uh, that was the Wii U. See, I've not really played it that much. Um, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. I think it... It, it nearly destroyed Nintendo after the win. It wasn't a good thing. Yeah. I'd give it a one as well. I mean, even just looking at the list, you wouldn't put it in the same tier as the Wii. No. Right? So then it would be a one. It would. That scientifically has to be a one, yeah. doesn't it? Stu, are you going to defy science? No, no. I'm happy for it to be in the trash. Yeah, you already defy science with your existence, don't you? Ooh. Yeah, I've, not, I've not made a dick joke for a couple of minutes yet, so <laughs> you're doing I'm well. improving. Have you, become yeah. a, have you become a born-again Christian or something? I think, think so, yeah. The, with the Wii U as well. That's what we think of a siren. Wii U, Wii U. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> That's quite good. I like that. So that brings us to the modern day, well, 2017, with the Nintendo Switch, which, uh, as we know, was called Pro- Pro- uh, Nintendo NX until it was released. And it's the first console that's both a handheld and a normal console. And whilst not quite as powerful as the uh, Xbox One and PS4, it does have a lot of decent games on it. And somehow... Provide, presumably through some kind of weird magic, it's getting The Witcher 3 plus all the expansions on it on a teeny cartridge. Mm. Um, it's not going to run at the resolution. Is it, it going to run at like 20 frames per second? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's Mega Mac- Drive graphics. It's uh, or PS1 graphics. Yeah. But yeah, I'll probably still go for it because it's The Witcher and I can play it handheld, which is awesome. But yeah, it's say it's a clever thing. It's got these little Joy-Cons which are slot either side of the screen and you can have a proper controller for it if you want to, or you can slot the Joy Cons into like a frame controller, turn it into a little controller by itself. It's quite adaptable. My only complaint about it is just that everything's so expensive for it. Hmm. Like Final Fantasy X that came out in 2001 on the PS2, they're trying to charge 35 quid for the remaster. Yeah. It's like, nah, you're all right. I got it for 12 quid on the Vita before I got rid of that. Mm. Sorry, it's a bit cheeky. But games for the uh, Switch include Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is a big open world game, which is quite clever to get it working on that little Switch. And it's pretty fun. I've just got the cool Master Sword on it, so which is the ultimate weapon in the game. That's fun. Super Mario Odyssey, which we went, mentioned way back in episode one of Shard Select, I believe. Yeah. Where you can throw a hat at things that possesses people. And maybe it's possessing Mario all along. Um, we've got that game where you stack blocks multiplayer, which I refuse to say the name of in case he comes back to me from hell. <laughs> Ryan, say it for me. Tetris 99. Oh, God. Yeah, that one. It's got a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is the best Mario Kart because it's got loads of levels and stuff to do on it. It's fun. It's a fun multiplayer game. And it's got a Pokemon Let's Go, which is a really simplified version of Gen 1 Pokemon, which plays like Pokemon Go. That's why it's called Let's Go, I suppose. I'm not bothered with that one myself. Um... In terms of grading, I'd say it's a fantastic console. It's got a lot of good games out on it, but it's just too expensive. So I'm going to give it probably a 3 out of 5. Until it goes cheaper, it might, it might be a 4. What about you, Ryan? Well, I'm happy with a 3, yeah. I mean, you've, I, I, I know you've had a go on my Switch, haven't you? Not really quick, oh, you yeah. played Sonic Mania. What did you think of it? Yeah, it's done all right, yeah. Pretty decent. Have you had a go on once, yeah? Only at uh, the anime con. Oh yeah, we played Smash and got very confused, didn't we? 
I had no idea what I was doing in that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I wouldn't mind getting one, but I don't think I could justify 300 quid on one when I've got an Xbox One X. That's it, yeah. Once they go cheaper, I think they'll they'll sell absolutely tons of them, but they are good. Yeah, They're I mean, I'm like, tempted to get the... Uh, apparently, there's a cheaper version, one coming out for Christmas. Oh, there you there's go, rumors, then. So Just like, about that. one, you know, like one for the uh, the Pokemon games. Yeah. It'll be just, bundled with it. Just hang fire till Christmas then, eh? So maybe it might be a Black Friday deal, so... So, yeah. have to wait and see. How, how would you grade it? I'd say a three. I mean, I wouldn't mind having one. I wouldn't say it was cack, but... Well, yeah. To be- from the current generation standards, it can't be any better than a PlayStation 4 or Xbox, really, but it's got its own little market, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. So am I right in saying that puts it in the same tier as the SNES, then? As the snares and the uh, Mega Drive, I'd agree with that. Then, yeah, that's that, that's that's good praise, isn't it? Really, mm. that, that's if there were some good heavy hitters. Okay, so that has been the first half of the uh, console tearing episode. So, in the next episode, we're going to be looking at Sony and Microsoft. Just to, before you what? go, oh, wait. could you sing "I Am the Tetris Man" to the song of "I Am the Music Man"? I am the Tetris man, I come from the bowels of hell and I can play, yes I can play, fucking Tetris. <laughs> play Craig's bum Tetris, 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 stick it up your bum. <laughs> How was that, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so what were you just rubbing then? Yeah, my, pin my penis mainly. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I, was really I was thinking about it for a while. I was thinking, Tetris Man is, fits really well with music, man. Oh, yeah, I'm the Tetris Man. <laughs> <laughs> I come from Nintendo and I can play. Ryan's from Paul. <laughs> Ryan's definitely next. <laughs> He's, uh, apparently, he has a supple ass. Between <laughs> characters. <laughs>